Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, more of the Chosen. This is the legendary Iron Man Army of Two run, and my name is Saiken. We are going to beat the game on the highest difficulty with only two soldiers per mission. It's time for a good old supply raid, <clears throat> and we need some extra supplies, I'm sure. A couple of uh, facts, though, that should give us uh, r really some almost second thoughts here. It's only 10 enemies, which usually would uh, count for medium difficulty. We will see, though, that it is high difficulty, very uh, difficult to be precise. This area here is the area of uh, the um, assassin. However, this here is the sign of the warlock, so I am thinking about that we might run into the warlock. The problem that I'm seeing with that is the warlock just received um, the ability to see um, invisible units. So if we were to fight against the warlock, Dragonova would be the worst potential um, choice. So we can either go with Dragonova and Edgar Alien Poe. It's option number one. Option number two, and I'm almost preferring that more, is we're going with Renman and Zirkem. Uh, kind of going in, uh, trying to blast our way through it and use uh, Dragonova plus Edgar Alien Poe for uh, the uh, next um, alien facility. Um, with Renman, we would have uh, immunity against uh, the Warlock. And we would have high ground for uh, probably high ground for Zirkim with his spider suit. Uh, usually, you will find some sort of high ground in all of the maps. So um, those two can be a good team, and we've seen how well they work. So I'm probably going to go with them. I am thinking about whether or not we are going and opting for this ammunition, or if we want a different ammunition for uh, him. Blue screen rounds. There are only codices. Everything else is biological. Um, however, killing a codex in one go might be worth it, so let's stick with it for now. And I think that's a good sorter. As for our overall um, run and the supply rate, uh, rate in general, uh, keep in mind if we were to lose the supply run, we would end up in a situation where we also lose North Africa. That would be detrimental because we're losing the continent bonus. So um, effectively all of the missions that happened in Africa should be won uh, because we don't want to lose our um, continent bonus. Maybe we are finally lucky enough to have a third um, uh, soldier um, joining us. We haven't had that for quite some missions. Yeah, let's see. If we're really fighting against the Warlock, it's going to be a bummer. In the past times when we fought against him, the main problem were the, uh, the Spectral Zombies, and just getting rid of them. Would be nice to, to not run into the same issue. Alright, off we go. Renman and Zirkim are on the prowl. By the way, I just fucked something up that I just realized at this moment. Why am I going giving him the spider suit instead of the wrath suit? That's really stupid. He only has 14 hit points now. Uh, you guys remember the last mission we were effectively um, finishing the wrath suit. So that's a... Uh, that's that's a bad play from my side. Could have prepared that better. Uh, that's usually why I take more time off screen to prepare the missions. Um, just to make sure that no slippage like this happens. Anyways, um, we will have 12 crates and the 12 crates will slowly um, disappear. But the timer for the crates will only start once we effectively have uh, scouted out the first uh, enemy pack. So still some time for us to moving. to keep on moving. Also keep in mind since we are in concealment, it effectively means that if there would be the warlock, um, it's only appearing once we have um, scouted out the first pack of enemies. Um, until then, it'll be 
it'll be waiting. Uh, the Chosen only appears really once you scout out the enemy. So there we go. That's an Archon plus another... It appeared to be like a captain. Okay. So far so good. Again, we're trying to not be spotted out. Just being mindful of vision ranges. It's not a captain, it's a <coughs> stun lancer. My apologies. We do have the high ground, which is really good for us. Double time. Might as well just move up. Overwatch. And let's see if they if this patrol here moves at all. Okay, it does not, which is not bad for now. I mean, one of the things that we could do is we could uh, run and gun in here, effectively move all the way down here. Um, that way, since both of them will move uh, move away, we're going to get a free um, hit with uh, Blade Storm. So that's an option, just to increase the damage a little bit. This here is not in uh, vision range yet. I think we're going to wait one more turn. Okay, apparently no other, uh, no other pack. So if we were to, uh, if we were, oh my gosh, my <coughs> voice is uh, somewhat leaking today. So if we were to move uh, down here, That'll trigger both of them uh, a blade storm attack against the Archon, which isn't the worst. That could be a really solid uh, start. We still have run and gun um, to to take a sh uh, to take a further shot, and then we do have a, pla a placeable and untouchable to move back. Uh, we with a high ground, there is an advantage because we are having death from above on uh, on Renvan. So taking a few shots here isn't the worst either. Could might as well be a kill, although would need to be max damage, uh, so it's not yet full kill. I think we're going to go with the discovery, um, discovery plus blade storm attack, and then we still have a normal attack okay. left over. So enemy spots us out. That's good. We're moving down here. There's the blade storm, nice little burning. Very solid. 14 hit points, okay. Let's think about it. I mean, we could run and gun to here, then just use the rapid fire, effectively kill him and move all the way back so that they're all the way back to here so that there is a blade storm opportunity. That definitely would work. This here is an option as well. Not a crit chance, but we could use chain shot to kill him. I think the easiest way really is to run and gun. Coming for you. Moving okay, in. That also increases our chance of. Um, that also increases the the crit chance. We're going to use chain shot because chain shot is a kind, uh, uh, just a little bit weaker than rapid shot. We're still at a 95% chance to hit. First shot hits. The second shot hits. 
nice little flanking shot and the placeable placeable moves us almost all the way back if you say so. moving close to it so that we can motivate it to actually go closer and attack him in melee with the implacable that's a perfect start um, with it untouchable sorry that's a perfect start just a normal shot I don't want to waste um, the chain shot He's burning, so he should go for Ranvan, take a take a hit and be killed. Yeah, I figured that that would happen. Not really surprising. What is negative though is the all-seeing part would be uh, is very bad. It counters um, our our. Um, Reaper. Beastmaster means he can summon a lot of chrysalids, so that's bad. He has uh, many um, uh, defensive abilities. Immunity to explosions um, will get blast shield when uh, we are missing. So these are quite uh, quite uh, hefty strength that he's having and the only really disadvantage that we can take is easy target from high ground. Uh, so that's really the the only advantage that we can take against him two more packs here codex uh, plus plus um, uh, sectoid damn that missed but we still have untouchable which is fine that's why i wasn't really afraid about it in the first place Okay, so as I was saying, I mean we need we need to mo move just a little bit. There's a lot more to be scouted out. I'm trusting you here. We've got Advent here. That certainly doesn't make our situation easier, not at all. We could definitely deal with the Archon. This here is probably the best uh, thing that we could do for a starter. That will cause an explosion. It'll hit one of them, remove all of uh, the uh, cover. So that's a good starter. Oh, frames are dropping. I'm sorry for that. Okay, so that means we can theoretically start um, killing them one by one. Hundred percent. Hmm. I think we're going to go for the X throw just to set him up. We'll reduce our melee damage just a little bit, but the death from above here will make sure that we will be able to kill him. That resets our. Um, our um, ability points, so uh, extra points, we are now having an extra action point for death from above. We can continue here, which would be a good start. We would need a crit though to actually kill this guy. Um, might as well end up moving really close to him for this extra oomph. I would want to get the kill and we would probably also need to secure some of the crates at least both of them are 
Both of them are currently marked to, to be removed. Uh, it's, this sucks. Uh, we we would need to kill him. I would want to keep. I would want to keep the rapid fire. Um, if we were to melee attack him, that's probably the better idea. We get a reset, and, and there is a higher chance to actually hit him. So. Blade Master kill. Plus we're getting some loot of it, out of it. Nice little Alarium core. Movement to pick up the chest. Free marking uh, it, which is good. Advent's locator is down and our transponder is active. Firebrand will handle the pickup. And you know what? We're going to set this guy up and we're going to move in even deeper with our uh, with our Reaper. I like the idea. Zirkim sets him up for a kill. This here is a very solid chance to kill him. Continuing to go in with the Reaper. I got it, right? We could even go with Rapid Fire and immediately kill him. I think that's not a good idea. Instead, we're going for a Slash Attack. We will have uh, Bladestorm right next to him. He's burning. And as soon as he's moving, he's going to take another hit. We're going to lose one crate. But overall, the play and the dynamics, I think I played this round uh, quite well. Alright, there's the blade storm. He's burning and that should be stasis. It is not. Instead we're untouchable. Incoming! Over here! Need to be careful because there are two packs back here. We've pulled the first one. And there's probably zombie summoning. Yep. Spectral zombies. Nasty little buggers. Come on, go to Renven and take your blade storm attack. Very nice. Takes a good old spectral rupture, which means there is a chance to. Hit all, uh, kill all of them next turn. I still extra damage. All right, very well. Good. So these guys are all in range of uh, dying. This here is a bit more problematic. We can't. I wish we would have Reaper again because with uh, the melee attack, we certainly can deal with uh, the Sectoid. There's another pack over here, which we need to be a bit mindful of. This here unfortunately does not allow us for high ground. Hmm. Might as well consider to pull it a bit back, to be honest. It's the furthest for a grenade. Okay. I was honestly hoping that we could see them here from the high ground. Now that we can't, that's a bit of a bummer. 
The Codex will teleport back, so I'm not terribly concerned about that. We could move up to here, take a shot, and then go behind the crates just to pull back. I don't want to go overboard. There's another pack here, and it would just stink to uh, to pull them right now. I think the more reasonable approach is to move back, get some solid distance. Taking the shot, that will give him untouchable, which is important, and implaceable. With the implaceable, we are going to go back to here. Zirkim himself will move all the way over here. And this here should kill all of them. Because uh, the zombie with the spectral rupture will die, will also cause another explosion. Interestingly enough, he did not die after his. Uh, he, he's survived while whilst being um, sustained. And he did not die. That is really interesting. I definitely got that one. The weakness of these minions only furthers the need for my presence here. I will sacrifice you for the elders blessing. Okay, one more round and then there are new zombies, so might as well move in. We can see that they are moving a bit closer. Still no run and gun. We could, however, move up here, take a shot. That's an option. We still have the teamwork um, left over. Like moving to here, taking a shot uh, could be a thing. We don't have Reaper ready yet either. I would like to kill the uh, the codex right away can't see anyone from here which means it's it's really not a good idea to uh, to leave Renman there so we need to do a different play saturation fire That's one option. Another one is demolition and freeing up the codex. Another one is taking a 50-50 on the codex. No, that would be out of range, unfortunately. I think we're well positioned here to, to have an extra hit. And hitting the sectoid uh, with our gun would kill him. So I think we're going for the safe play. I got it, right? Need a nice little right. and uh, playable. Uh, we can use that a bit later. Uh, hmm. The elite priest is going to die and this is a 50-50 of killing it immediately. If not... Oh, I forgot. It could theoretically dodge. Good. We, we now have two code, uh, codices. Um, they will teleport. They will teleport, which means it really doesn't make much of a difference by standing here or there. Might as well position ourselves here. The fire will kill the priest regardless. So if the codex behind our in our back does not teleport, um, we can kill it. If it does teleport, yeah, the positioning wouldn't matter either way. 
Yeah, there was the teleportation, so I said it doesn't matter. Psy bomb. Removes the ammunition. Bit of overwatch, okay. I get it. Alright, so. I mean, S4, we are immune to Overwatch with uh, Renman. So, what we're going to do is we're going to reload here. We're going to hit the Codex, kill it, and remove the Overwatch by doing so. Got the Implaceable, that's good. Take the high ground as uh, as always. Moving out of it is perfect. Reload. Oh, are you telling me we can't see this guy? Good, whatever. I'm going to use saturation fire in that case. For it, it seemed to be out of um, just out of line of sight. So we know there is a Warlock and another pack back here, so I don't want to go overboard with our positioning. I think we're fine for now. We got at least one crate. It's going to be difficult enough as, as it is. We do have Implaceable, so just a bit closer is fine. Even if we would have been discovered, we do also have Untouchable, so that's also okay there are new zombies hopefully they will be spawning right next to random so that we can blade storm them now that seems to be the case i am annoyed about the fact that he is missing his blade storm That was a good one. I like it. Good job, Brennan. that this guy here is going to be transported away moving just okay. a bit further there shows us that there is again no one so let's start with um, hitting the spectral zombie we want to make sure that we can kill it it's good Got unplaceable. We are going to reload, kill, and move. So death from above allows us an extra movement here. I think we are. We we should target to uh, really move in. Zirkim is moving. Can't really do anything about the other uh, the other uh, chest. This one here is also too far away. That's a problem. We are, even though we are fighting hard, we're pretty slow compared to what the game assumes us to to have a speed. If you are going with six men, this all of this here is way easier. So there's one more pack, and then it's the Warlock himself. And I'm wondering, maybe I I should just one on one the Warlock uh, with um, with Renman alone. That way the mind control will not be an issue. If you say so. Moving in further. Taking concealment, 
just to expedite our movement. Super dangerous to stand here because of this, it can explode. We're double moving. I want to be mindful of all of the crates that we can save uh, by getting in faster. Looks like hostiles over here. Are we ready for another pair of zombies? We aren't yet. So if if we were to move in up to here, that'll trigger two blade storm attacks right away, and I think that's what we're going to do. Let's bonus damage without even doing anything. I like it, and and we can um, free the chest on top of it. Run and gun gives us extra crit chance, so this here should be a solid uh, play. Right, that's the first free attack. That's the second one, nice little burning effect here, really, really good. We are looking into marking the supplies, perfect. I am wondering... The warlock always was back here, so we need to be a bit careful. Eighty percent chance we can still get uh, one more action with teamwork. We could move here into cover, and then take the shot. If we were to give ourselves teamwork right now. It's a difficult decision. You know what? Why not? I am with you. I'm trusting you here. All right, we spotted out the warlock. That at least uh, prevents more zombies from coming. The chosen is in position. Time to put it down. Okay, time to kill this guy. Check it before you get too close. Implaceable and untouchable. We do have Bladestorm for the priest. That's good. I think we're in a in a solid position overall. Might as well move up all the way to here okay. so we can grapple hook ourselves to the rooftop next turn. And that's hopefully going to be a hit. There's the blade storm. Ah, we're missing. Adjusting sights. Untouchable is gone. Unfortunately, we missed because we could have killed him. He's trying to mind control. It's likely that that's going to be one of his first priorities. My power will wash over the battlefield. Okay, so... If we were to go to here... First things first. There's a pretty solid chance of actually killing this guy. We need to reload and slowly move towards the warlock, okay? So it's reload, it's a reaper. I'll make it quick. It's hopefully killing him. It's not killing him because he has sustenance, but that's okay, he's going to die next turn. We're not in a bad position by any stretch of the imagination. Rolling. Yeah, I should have maybe opted for the chest. Deploying grapple.
All right. Um, I think we're just going to overwatch because we need one. Uh, regardless, we want to keep the high position and we would need to have one movement action to go to the corner anyways. I still do not want anyone other than Renman to be inside of the Warlock. The Warlock uh, has a lot of nasty abilities and the Mind Shield protects as well. So his Beastmaster is now on cooldown. He can only summon them once. Luckily for us, we do have uh, Bladestorm. And luckily for us, uh, part two, the Bladestorm actually hit. Nice little untouchable. Okay. So by moving over to here, uh, I wish I can take the high ground. This here is high ground and can see the chrysalid. Yeah, that works. All right, one down. That's it. My expectations for them were exceedingly low. All right, two down. And we should start to soften him up. Not a chain shot yet. I think, yeah, kinetic plating will be a problem for us, but that's okay. For now, since they are battling it out, Zirkim is making sure that we got the nice little money. Mark those supplies, buddy. Still immune against your mind control shenanigans. Don't even think about it. Are you ready to be redeemed? Alright, reloading for us. And I think rapid fire is the way to go. 50-50 two times in a row isn't the worst. Um, we could also move to here later and just take double shots. I think that's easier yeah that's what we're going to do next for now half cover high ground nice lamo shredding he should use mind spin or, or whatever the mind attack is called next understood moving out Okay, where are the other supplies? Don't want to move too far away, to be honest. There's one more down here. There's one over here, but maybe Zirkim is needed. Yeah, and that's the problem if he does not use his other mind abilities. All right, moving down, okay. and I think it's time to give him a bit of a uh, bit of a lesson about what we ex uh, can accept and what we can't accept. Nice little shot, thirteen points of damage. Fortunately, we missed the second one. Ah, bummer. Not, we can simply move up. He's going to use his uh, mind control next, and afterwards. Ah, 
afterwards we should be fine. Alright, moving to here. I want to close the battle with him as uh, soon as possible. So run and gun, reload, and we're going to go for a chain shot. Nice little hit, 13 points of damage. Fortunately missed the second one. It's a bummer. Move into here, should flank him. Yep, very solid flank. And we are going to go with another chain shot. Very good, 13 critical. His mind control is on cooldown. That's why he's not using it. So he's uh, opting for a spectral army instead. Fine with me. He's going to be invulnerable whilst he's doing it. But it's usually the beginning of the end. Once he goes for a spectral army, we could kill them and then it's his turn. Nice little blade storm. Come on, buddy. Good job. I'm happy with uh, with how the run turned out. Oh wait, four guys in Spectral Army. That's new. Do you not see that the elders okay, have that indeed is new. I'm thinking about grappling here, moving down here, then spraying with the saturation fire to hit all three of them, uh, and cleaning up with Renvin. Um, yeah, with Renvin. I think we're going to do that. Sounds like a reasonable plan to me. Grappling. Moving over here. Afterwards, move into here. Yep, that's this hits everyone. We are Moving out of range. What's over there? Now the saturation fire kicks in. It on thick. Yeah, the distribution of damage was not that optimal. Moving in one hit. Okay, good. I definitely got that one. You should feel proud in having died for the glory of the elders. Moving into here so we can uh, blade storm him even if uh, he's not immediately dying. And I think we're just going to take a normal shot, uh, which will bring him down but not kill him. Both of them have untouchable. Oh, it effectively killed him. That's fine. Good for uh, good enough. Both of um, them have untouchables, so this guy here can't deal any damage. He ran in. I was hoping we could maybe kill him with Blade Storm. There's the untouchable I was talking about. Might as well give it a shot. 
Nice little hit. That's good. And how about... That's our chance to hit him, 90%. How about more? Melee slash 100%. How about we are reloading? Okay. Uh, melee slashing him from here. There we go. There is still an implacable. And that implacable moves us to here, so that the warlock takes another bladestorm attack. Oh, which of course misses. We do have untouchable though, so I'm fine. Tries another mind control. Yeah, we're going to go a bit more aggressive now. Which is shotgun to the face. Moving a bit further into half cover. That's a 50-50. We're going to deal damage. Uh, we're going to deal three damage regardless because we do have an, uh, a superior stock. But might as well deal 10 damage and almost kill him. So we do have a blade storm, and he is in uh, in lethal range. And there is the kill. So short of the two points of damage that we took um, for missing one of our melee attacks, everything else worked out relatively well. Renman and Zirkim are a really good team. Great job, Commander. But there's no trace of that chosen left. I've got a feeling we haven't seen the last of him. I got the feeling we haven't seen the last of him uh, as well. But since he needs to reform, I think, and this is not knowledge, this is just uh, my experience, Chosens need a couple of missions before they can come back. So I'm hoping since... Oh no, never mind. The Warlock was not the one this month uh, that had the full information, uh, information bar. So it's going to be the Assassin that's launching the attack. I was hoping that we might have um, delayed the attack on the Sky Ranger. But we haven't. Never mind. At least we know these chosen can be killed. Really nice, really nice, really, really nice. They did a great job. And look at that. 200 uh, supplies. A lot of alien alloys. Very important. Superior laser sight is great. And a bunch of corpses. Soldier bond available. Wait a second, that is interesting. Training. Okay, so once these two gentlemen are back in business, lightly wounded, three more days, then we can actually upgrade their bond to the highest level, which I would very much appreciate. Lovely. Okay, let's shortly get some cash, shall we? Because I want to buy the other uh, GTS improvements. It feels it's a good, uh, we have a good momentum going here. A couple of Sun Lancer corpses, yes. Just a couple of alloys and a bit of valerium to increase our cash flow.
few of the corpses. I usually like, just for the production value, I like to retain a few of them. Chrysalis corpses. We can wait with uh, the corpses until they are in high demand. That would increase our um, our cash info even a bit more. Sector port is okay. Just looking at normal at normal uh, weapon modifications because we definitely don't need those now. Stock, for instance, repeater is always good stock. However, we don't need that hair trigger. We don't need that either. Laser side. Good. Now off to our guerrilla tactic school. And this, I told you the last time, uh, I was already working a bit on it. So got our uh, sharpshooter and reaper the last time, which now means we do have a specialist and grenadier left over as the last two. And that's great. I like the specialist's ability to uh, better use overwatch and um, explosive critical hits are wonderful. So we are now fully upgraded on the GTS side. That is good. I like it. As for engineering, I think we only need yeah we only need the fusion blade and that's not a real need at the moment um, and the gremlin mark three which is also not bad so once once we get some more um, supplies we should be fine one way of getting those is to think about what we need to do next and I still would want to do this here, but I want to trigger the next um, Guardian. Oh yeah, and we can use supplies in order to build a radio tower here, a radio station here, to then finally uh, increase our influence. Alright, which means... In the meantime, we're going for some asserted loot and just we're just waiting as soon as we get a mission where we can kill the Viper King. I'm very much up for for storming the next uh, facility. Another 117 intel, which is great. Improves transmi transmission protocols will allow our network to handle additional traffic, reduces the cost of an additional comm station upgrade for our resistance comms by 50%. Well, that's not bad. Um, it'll probably help us with uh, the cost for the extra communication stations. So might as well take that for now because they are becoming a bit more pricey and we do not have an advantage uh, for uh, using any of uh, of uh, these autopsies. Uh, we can do them as we go. I was even considering going to the Shadow Chamber and starting the projects here, just to continue the storyline a little bit and, and almost progress it that way. But this has to wait for now. There's our next mission which is another rescue the VIP mission. That's difficult and it's only 12, um, 12 enemies. So I can already tell you that that is most likely going to be the Viper King. And we can finally lay it to rest. No, it's only saying difficult, so maybe I was wrong with the Viper King. Maybe I was wrong. However, number one, why is there nothing in the uh, queue here? That is not good. We should always strive at least to get some uh, something done. Um, do we really need uh, heavy weapons? Not yet 100% sure. This here could be useful, but I don't think so, I think so either. The problem is the others all cost supplies. I would probably go for another Wrath suit because I think they are incredibly handy. 
We don't need sparks. We don't need the advanced explosives for now. Which means, let's go for a couple um, of ammunitions. Um, I'm mainly looking for tracer rounds or for AP rounds, just so we do have a broader, um, broader set of options. And what I wanted to do is, before we end this video, I want to take a look at the training school. There we go, training center. Uh, uh, soldier bond so we are continuing with um, the development of bond level 3 and look at that oh wait a second ah, that's unnecessary change of uh, a chance of panic when we're encountering a chosen okay so Zirkim needs Zirkim why are you doing this to this run um, he already had uh, the infirmary treatment and has recovered apparently not good enough so they are now bond training and afterwards we're going to remove uh, the fear from Zirkim which means in the meantime since also Hogbite is out might as well go into the uh, next run with Edgar Alien Poe and Outrider which is going to be interesting um, that's one option that I'm considering. The other option uh, that I'm considering is to take um, one, one of the rangers here and just uh, pair them up with, uh, with um, or one of the grenadiers here and pair them up uh, with one of our specialists uh, to, to have two newbies uh, on the run. Uh, mainly thinking about the idea of what happens if the run goes wrong. Um, it wouldn't be too bad to lose two uh, or to have two of them captured. It would suck to have Edgar Allan Poe or Outrider captured. Yeah, I'll think that through. Uh, through the both of them still need experience, so we're probably going to go with that team. Anyways, thank you for watching this episode. We are going to continue with yet another VIP mission just in the next episode. Thanks a lot. Leave a comment um, and don't forget to post a like that helps a lot um, see you in the next episode bye bye